In this video, I would like to showcase the warm-ups challenges from the NomCon Capture the Flag competition that I hosted just this past weekend for the 2024 game. Was a lot of fun, hey, huge success. Little bit of uh, great stuff on the scoreboard. Big congratulations to all of our winners. And it's wild to see like, what, almost more than two and a half thousand folks playing the competition. Statistics for the game, in case anyone was interested, hey, we got over 7,000 users registered, just to almost 4,000 teams. So crazy cool, great success. We had a lot of fun with it. But anyway, let's get to the good stuff. I'd love to show you some of these warm ups. We'll start with the small ones, read the rules. This is pretty easy, kind of just bare bone basic boilerplate that I do for every single capture the flag that we host. Uh, this page does note hey, if you look closely, you might be able to find a flag on this page. This is just kind of a gimmick, a little cutesy, if you were to right-click and view page source, in which case you'll get the raw HTML, the hypertext markup language that builds up the page, and honestly, just scrolling down to that section, where they're hinting, oh, you might find a flag on this page, there is an HTML comment, uh, just some... Oh, less than symbol, exclamation point, hyphen, hyphen. The usual syntax for an HTML comment. And that is the flag. So we copy and paste that, submit that, and we're good to go. One very similar as just a sanity check welcome is the technical support flag. That is really just joining the Discord server, opening the CTF open ticket channel, and then validating that you are, exist as a human being. Easy to submit. Another obligatory capture the flag challenge to have in the mix is a simple strings challenge, and that's what twine is. It says, hey, Google tells me that twine means a strong thread or string consisting of two or more strands of blah, blah, blah. We have a file to download, just twine.jpg, and with that, I can get back to my command line. Over in my downloads directory, I do have twine.jpg set and installed here for us. I can use Ristretto inside of Kali Linux as the image viewer, and it is just simply that. It's twine. It's literally a ball of strings. That's the joke. Super easy solution. All you have to do is just run strings on the image. The gimmick that I like to use is because image viewers, those applications like Ristretto or EOG, I have GNOME, whatever the case may be, they'll go up to they find the end of an image file format. Like they won't carry onwards or continue processing the file once they've reached the standard end of a .png or .jpg file or whatever. So with that, you could squeeze in some extra data and I'll literally just duplicate the image itself but put a flag in the middle in between those. So, oh, that's cutesy, that's dumb. You'll track it down. Uh, literally, you see JFIF, the, again, a header for a JPEG image, but the flag is really all that we need there. Obviously, given the standard flag format, you could just grep TAC OE for only an extensive regular expressions uh, flag with the standard prefix dot star to say everything, and we'll make that lazy with the question mark for our... Uh, regular expressions. I like to use color equals none here because that will automatically highlight it in red, which you don't really need to do in most cases. Uh, we just, I don't know, in case you script or put together your own solve.sh script, that's worth doing. Literally strings challenge, Dumbo easy, we're good. Another one that just had a little bit of a gimmick to it is iCar. This is literally genuinely the iCar file. If folks aren't too familiar, we can pull it up iCar file, download anti-malware test file. The iCar file is a known, chosen antivirus test file. So any AV engine or security utility has a standard, an actual like test bed to say, look, this should always be determined as malicious, quote unquote. It should always be something that your antivirus will actually flag, alert, send notifications and let you know. With that said, it's a Dumbo little challenge because ultimately we just want the hash of the iCar file, but in case you happen to be running on Windows or something not in a sandbox environment for you to be able to play, test things in, explore, maybe some potential malware for later on in the capture of the flag, hey, it gets in your way. Maybe it will eat and nuke the file. The gimmick is it's ultimately just this string, and we've showcased this in plenty of other videos before, but I genuinely just want the hash of that. So not too hard of a challenge here. Ultimately, it is just downloading that file. If folks weren't familiar with it, maybe there's a little bit of education in that. But now, back in my downloads, I do have iCar. I'm on Linux, so hey, we don't have Windows antivirus or Defender whining at me. So I could just use the simple command, md 5 sum for iCar, and we would then wrap that flag in just the flag prefix as the challenge suggested. 
You know, I hear some fun stories from like DEF CON or whatever where folks will put a QR code of that like on the roof of their car or something. And then as they're driving by the, I don't know, scanners for a toll road or something, it scans it and then it just breaks everything. <laughs> Next one to showcase is That's Not My Bass. It says, everyone knows about Bass 64, and that's the hint, a little bit of a teaser. Hey, yeah, we always see Bass 64 encoded data, so there's a link to the Wikipedia page where folks, if they've never seen it before, can get some inkling as to what it is, what this stuff looks like. They include an example here with you've got the regular randomization, lowercase capital letters, some plus signs or forward slashes for the standard, and equal signs at the end for padding. But in our case, we're looking at this challenge title, that's not my base, but this is the encoded data. And folks might be wondering, okay, what the heck is it? It's not base 64, that's not my base. This is one that should be very, very easy to track down just by simply using CyberChef. We want to keep it easy. It is a warmups challenge after all. So if I hop over to CyberChef, if I were to paste that in, we have this. If you wanted to, I'm assuming we could probably just throw this into magic and then ask for whatever depth of one that doesn't matter. Matter, probably just a single step. We'll see if it does anything worthwhile for us down below in these options here. Nothing specific from what I can tell, just scrolling through. But considering we can put a crib or a potential known plain text, we could just say flag and let's see if that tracks it down. No? Okay, dumb. Man, the rare occasions that magic actually fails us. Maybe intensive mode, depth? Nah, whatever. Ultimately, we know that because this is a base suggestion and we are decoding from a given base, we'll say from base, and that gives us some options. CyberChef tells us, look, these are the things that they already know about cooked up standard. We've done ASCII 85 or whatever base 85 we'd like, 58, etc. in the mix. We've even done some wild challenges of like base 65,535. Those look really funny but this is base 92 we drag that in it's literally all that it needs there is our flag we can go and submit that and that challenge is done and just a quick second before we go any further, if I may say, look, the only way that I'm able to share videos just like these, put out free educational content, and especially work with the team of people that help contribute and develop challenges and make things for Capture the Flag and for the channel, uh, well, I need to be able to pay them. So uh, with that, I am super duper grateful, thankful for all the support of sponsors. With that, let me say I'm super thankful for the sponsor of today's video, Census. Census is the leading internet intelligence platform for threat hunting and attack surface management. They can discover assets six times faster than others on the market. As a comprehensive discovery platform that scans and maps the entire internet, Census provides invaluable data for threat hunting and cyber threat intelligence, revealing attacker infrastructure like Cobalt Strike Beacons and other command and control frameworks. It excels in discovery, uncovering unknown assets and device information that's critical as organizations grow and conventional scanning falls short. Consider acquisitions or unrecognized cloud environments that typically evade regular scans, but Census continuously identifies and attributes these assets to the rightful owners. Census consistently proves its value in knowing the internet's attack surface for security research and worldwide threat hunting. Some of the world's largest organizations rely on Census to advance their cybersecurity objectives, including the US government and more than 50% of the Fortune 500. Get started with Census with my link below in the video description, jh.live slash census. Huge thanks to Census for sponsoring this video. Next up is another bit of a gimmick challenge here, QRRRRR. Uh, in the warm-ups category, it says, wait a second, they made QR codes longer. And we're given a file to download, just a simple .png image. Taking a look at that in our downloads, we do have this. And again, I'll use Ristretto to open that up. It is literally a long QR code, so to speak. Just a QR code like the box you're used to, but stretched out wide, rectangular, horizontal. Fun fact, this is actually a little bit of a callback to a video that I released previously, and a couple of the challenges do have their own Easter egg from videos that I've shared, but this was literally, they made QR codes longer seven months ago, and it's exactly that, just an elongated QR code. This is what's called an RM QR code. It's put together by Denzo Wave, and I'll be the first to admit, I have not found a whole lot of 
places, tools, things that you could use to actually decode these. I know that you can do them just as easily with uh, encoding, like you can create these QR codes, but being able to track it down in actually a quick and easy tool to decode them is a little bit harder to do. We've used this web page previously, and this is how I put together the image in the first place, but oftentimes you need to use an app, just like on your cell phone. Uh, I think it's QR QR. That is what you might be able to use put together by the Denso Wave folks. Yeah, QR code that's available. And that is all that you really need to be able to, oh, hi, there's me. Ha <laughs> ha. That is the app QR QR, the QR code reader that I've seen on the Google Play Store for Android that will scan that and return the flag out to you. That's all it is. Just scan the QR code, get the flag. It's interesting to look back here at these challenges because QR, the long QR code, I think had the lowest number of solves in the warmups category, at about 1,200. Uh, Uriel, I think, was the most, and we should cover that one, but it's interesting. That's Not My Base was also pretty low for solve count. Read the rules and technical support were way up there, obviously, but Icar and Copy Pasta. Copy pasta I want to showcase, but first let's cover Uriel. Uriel was browsing the web and he saw this big long blob of text in his address bar. He was telling me about it, but I don't remember everything he said. I think he mentioned something like it happened twice. So the gimmick here, the gotcha, is this is URL encoding. You're used to seeing percent sign encoding, just percent signs all over the place, but this is uh, noted with, oh, it happened twice. A little bit of a gimmick there because the percent 25 that you see pretty frequently is literally, genuinely, the percent sign character, URL encoded to denote itself with another percent sign and 25. Because 25 is, I believe the ASCII value? I don't think, no, hex, these are all in hex. But percent 25 hex <laughs> is the value for percent signs. Does that make sense? Let me show you. So we had a classic percent sign. And if I were to take the ordinal value of that, so to get the ASCII value, that is 35. If I were to convert that into hex, it is hex 25. So in percent encoding with URL encoding, the zero X prefix for usual hex values just becomes a percent. So you have percent 25 to refer to literally a percent sign. Is that confusing? <laughs> Better answer is doing this for like the letter F, right? So flag were to be built out, that's 66. But the gimmick here is that this is 3636. If it's supposed to be a flag, well, it is double encoded, bear in mind. So that means that both of these sixes are now going to be represented in their percent value. So it's kind of, oh, just an extra layer of encoding. It's dumb, it's stupid, but that's why the 36 repeated make up the six and the 25 make up the percent sign. Okay, let's show you how to do this right. Obviously, CyberChef would crank through that. Copy, paste. Let me hop back into CyberChef. We can just paste that all here. We can do from URL decoding, URL decode. Now, of course, this is just, as I mentioned, that letter F to start the flag was percent %66. If we were to run this twice, URL decode, then we get our pure flag value. Now, for the longest time, I could have sworn that there is and maybe you know, there's supposed to be like a URL encode command. I could have sworn there was something on the command line and I might've even mentioned it in a video previously, but I don't remember what it's from. I think I've seen like, grids clients or something, grid site clients, but that's not in my repositories in Kali. I can't like apt search that maybe? No, grid site, no. So maybe I'm wrong. There is, however, apparently a tool within Kali in their repos called Hurl, very aptly named. Uh, also requires H capital URL, which is annoying to do on the command line, truthfully. Uh, but given a base64 encoded string, okay, it can cut through it. It can also do hexadecimal URL encoded stuff. So it has a lot of options. Like if you take a look at the syntax, the structure here, I think we can sudo apt install Hurl. And yeah, that'll pull it down, but you'll need to use H capital URL, which is weird. Uh, taking a look at the output though, it can do so much stuff. Like it has SHA, hashing, ROT13, hex, binary, etc. Ultimately, I just want the URL decoding. And it's odd in the command line arguments, like capital U is to encode, uh, lowercase u is to decode, and yet 
I don't know. I would I would just assume TAC E to encode and TAC D to decode, but TAC D refers to double URL encoding. So it is purely coincidence if you run hurl TAC lowercase D to decode on that thing, it spits out purely the flag because it knew to double encode just by coincidence happenstance of those parameters. Ultimately, you would use in, I guess, quote unquote reality, the lowercase u to unencode it and then do that again, but you can't copy paste this easily because of its output. So interesting tool. I could have sworn there was a URL encode or URL decode. Please, 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 if I'm forgetting and you happen to know, please let me know in the comments below. Saving the best for last, literally the silliest, most stupid challenge that I had called copy pasta. It says, you know those funny internet messages that everyone likes to copy and paste? Yeah, turns out they make pretty good warmups capture the flag challenges too. This is a dynamic service, so you will need to stop or start, create, spin up your container, and we have a netcat command we could go ahead and work with now. I am running this locally, truth be told, so I can localhost connect, hey, netcat on a given port here. And there's a lot of nonsense here, but what I had tried to create is genuinely, literally, just the like GNU slash Linux copy pasta. When someone on the internet's like, actually, I'd just like to interject for a moment. And they say, what you're referring to is in fact GNU Linux. I'll zoom out here so that's kind of in frame alongside my face, but like, take a look. If you look closely, you might be able to see that there are these black bars surrounding both the uh, like margin, uh, bottom, top, and sides of the text here. So what I genuinely am expecting folks to do, or I hope they do with copy pasta as the name, is to just drag and select all of this text. And you can see a little bit of the gimmick here where I'm hiding things from you because of the top bar and the middle, the breaks. Like if I were to copy and paste all of this, you see these gray lines in the middle? I'm tweaking you out. I am fooling you. I am doing some little deception here because if I actually paste this into a text editor like Sublime Text, there is our flag. It's just, it appears out of nowhere. It was hidden. It was a little trick to hide amongst a lot of the terminal character escape sequences. The challenge was called copy pasta and the task was literally to copy and paste. Uh, hey, just kind of a cutesy gimmick in case folks get some creative thinking, but that is how you could track down the flag. Let me show you how that's done though, because I think that was kind of neat. And like, that was the most fun that I had had with this challenge. So inside the directory for the source of copy pasta, we have the Docker file to spin this thing up, the configuration for that challenge, the flag itself, and server.py. Uh, don't think too much on server.py because it doesn't really matter. Like I'm sure there's some stupid bad code in there and it was not all that good. But uh, the gimmick is really using these character escape sequences for the terminal, for terminal emulator, whatever you happen to be running, GNOME terminal, I don't know, any shell that you're spinning up with, you'll be able to hide with the black background referring to the same actual color of your terminal and then making something invisible, setting that foreground color to be that background and then trying to hide some of the data. So I actually break up chunks of the text that I wanna to send to you, first text and then last text, and then I send them out in a stupid netcat service with invisible here in the mix to throw you off on highlighting things, another invisible with the flag just included, and just the first and last text. That's literally it, that is the service. But I thought you might think, oh, that small, stupid, simple uh, encoding for the hiding text in the command line, maybe that's a neat trick. And that is at least a quick crash course on all of the warmups challenges from NomCon Capture the Flag 2024. Granted, these are all marked easy because they are intended to be simple warmups. A lot of the other challenges like IDOR or All About Robots are very, very similar, simple, easy challenges. So we'll showcase those in a, another video, but man, there is more to cruise through. At the very least, I wanted to get the ball rolling with the small, simple warmups. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do all those YouTube algorithm things and please, pretty please, give some love to our sponsors. Seriously, they're the only reason we can make this channel do what it does. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video.